Hello and welcome to PC Shed on this live stream. Oh, I have been looking forward to this all day. So if you're here, then hopefully you will enjoy our stream. I'll just turn the music down a little bit. So what's going to be happening tonight? So tonight, as explained on a couple of tweets that I put out, is we are building a PC for a client, a guy called Richie. And uh, we're going to split this into three parts. So first part, I'm going to show you all the parts that we're going to be using. Uh, secondly, we're going to be stripping this case just behind me. Uh, but before we carry on, we're just going to check if the feed is all good. And hopefully, I'll have a few people who can tell me if my sound's all right. Because at the moment, I cannot hear myself. Hopefully we'll have uh, Richard joining us, and keeping us on track. I also have um, messaged the actual client um, that I will be doing his PC live, so we will be able to see what's going on. Um, so just before we went live, I had a second microphone. Um, that stopped working so OBS kept crashing even though they're on Tuesday we tested it and everything was working fine but every time there's an update uh, but hey ho the phones are live streaming so I can see always ads but anyhow so we'll try and get the majority done today uh, I've got a three-way camera. I was hoping for a four-way camera setup uh, so you can actually see close up. You can only get three working because OBS cannot distinguish between three equal cameras that I have, which is the Logitech C920s. Uh, and unfortunately, I had to rejig everything, but a ho. Check. Yay, good. So sounds coming through nicely. Cool. So let's have a quick gander. Let's see where switch over to three cameras so hopefully you'll be able to see there you go cool so um, I've got a camera set up so I can move it about so it can show you everything that's going to be happening move this across here so you can see so that's that's the majority of the stuff that is going to be used on the build itself I'm still waiting for one part that's supposed to arrive today and it didn't and I got the dreaded collect tomorrow card which is what I'm waiting for is a mount for the pump um, where are we? cool Yeah, so apart from the mount for the pump, everything else is here. Um, so we're going to get started and just give you a breakdown on everything I'm going to be using. And if you have any questions or anything like that, let me know. Uh, again, I don't know how long I'm going to stream for, as long as it takes. Uh, I'm not going to finish the whole build today. Um, because the deadline for it is in December so that's why I decided to stream it just do it bit by bit 
this is not a how to build a PC this is the way I do it this is the stuff that people don't see when I build PCs I do it but sometimes I don't have the time to record it uh, so throughout the whole stream I'll, I'll be taking pictures and videos with my uh, DSLR uh, but there you are so to start off let's get the camera in position So hopefully, I'll probably do it here. I'm going to start off with a mud ball. Yes, since I've uh, since I streamed, so bear with me. So uh, this is going to be a uh, Z170 build, and the reason for that is very simple, uh, budget-wise. Um, I would love to use a Z270, but as soon as you step up to that chipset the cost for the processor is a lot higher um, but if you can get a decent motherboard like this one this is the Aces Z170 Deluxe it's full pack of features so uh, the features that we want is mainly uh, M.2 drive so if the client wants to upgrade his drive you can do that we're going to be installing a solid state drive for the operating system uh, but if it wants to upgrade to the future also it's compatible to SLI so if it wants two graphics cards I can do so put this explain the board I already put the processor in so the processor that we're going to be using is this, the i7 6700k it's a quad core four cores physical four cores logical so like an eight core processor so a perfect gaming processor really uh, the gaming is a gaming PC customer requested for 1080p gaming he already let me know that he picked up a bit of a bargain on a uh, 2560 1440p monitor um, which you can use at 1080p and if he wants to upgrade the graphics card later on to maximize it because I think it's a 165 Hertz monitor he's got um, but we're going to concentrate at 1080p uh, the graphics card they're going to be using is a GTX 1070 it's a MSI calibration with EK so it comes factory with a EK water block so I'll show you that in a minute and um, I'm changing the power supply from the specs so if you want to see the specs I'll put it up for you so you can actually see the actual specs so if you bear with me ah, that's all good fun I normally have headphones on and listen to music while I do bills because that's the way I relax um, but at the moment I went out time to uh, set it all up so again any questions just let me know so I was just copying the link on chat anybody wants to see actual parts we're going to be using so uh, I don't know if you can see it like you can see it there we go. so the motherboard uh, we're going to be using uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 I've got two kits available Originally, I was going to put uh, 2,666 MHz kit, uh, but we decided to go do that. That's the RAM they're going to be using. It's uh, Corsair's Vengeance DDR4. 
Um, so this one is a 3000 megahertz kit. So we'll be using this in dual mode. Uh, this motherboard supports uh, dual modes, which is great. Um, four PSI Express length for one graphics card. Second one, so if you want to link them up with a SLI bridge, you can do so. Um, it's a hefty board. The heat sinks on it. Are, I've used this board before. I also built a X99 build for a friend of mine called, funny enough, Richard. Um, this we've done a few videos on that, and it's a great board. It's solid for overclocking. Um, the VRMs got heat sinks, so they're not going to overheat. Got plenty of uh, SATA ports, and the software that comes with it for overclocking the 6700K is easy to use. So I chose this board because it's an easy board to maintain, no hassle. I've used ACES over the years and never had any issues with it. We also have MSI boards as well. Um, funny enough, I have a Z270 uh, motherboard that I was thinking of using it, but when uh, the budget of a thousand pounds can only stretch so far. Um, I already tested the motherboard and pretty much every single part, including the graphics card, the RAM. Uh, the only things that uh, are used are the motherboard processor, RAM and graphics card. Everything else is new. So for a thousand pounds, that's a lot of gear, uh, considering that the case is new, um, power supply, water cooling, uh, SSD, pretty much everything. So there you go. I already updated the BIOS on the motherboard. So in the future, if he wants to swap over the 6700K to the 7700K um, CPU. Uh, hello Taco 43X, how are you doing? Um, you'll be able to do so. So let's look at the other parts. Yeah. So we're going to install a full retail version of Windows 10 Pro and we're going to be installing that on a Western Digital Green SSD uh, 240 gigabyte. Again, this is, uh, I normally use Samsung drives, but this is a budget build, but the speeds pretty much are almost on par, about 500 megabyte read and write. So that's what's going to be used for the operating system. Uh, for storage, and it's still sealed. For game storage, we're going to be using a 2 terabyte secret Barracuda. Um, again, I've used these drives before. I've got all my drives on my main system are uh, Seagate, uh, and also use uh, Western Digital Green, so I know they're solid. And both of these come with three years warranty, they're brand new. All the stuff that I bought new, I bought it from scan.co.uk. So uh, I usually buy water cooling parts from overclockers.co.uk uh, simply because any issues, the REM service is spot on. Scan, again, uh, it's a hit and miss with returns, but usually they're pretty good. For the graphics card, so as you can see that, yeah. So this is the MSI uh, Seahawk EK. Um, you don't, they don't make these anymore. You can find them on eBay. Um, but I'll open it up because I put everything back in a box. I've tested it. It overclocks like a beast. Um, and because we're doing a wood cool build, we can have really good temperatures. Um, and I'll explain the reason why water cooling is my hobby because especially with 10,000 series cars on the, on the way that uh, the Turbo Boost 3.0 operates. So, sorry. So, apologize if I keep turning, just checking if I'm getting any message or anything like that. So 
this is the behemoth of a card. It's a really long card. You can still see what the residue from when I tested. Um, but it's nickel, water block, and plexi. Full uh, back. So when you install it, I need to be able to see, to be able to see it. It, it will dominate the motherboard, big style. Um, and this is a great 1080p gaming card. If you want 60 frames a second, easily, not a problem. Everything on Ultra, not a problem. If you're going 1440p, you might have to tone down a couple of settings. Um, but overall, I've used these cards before, the GTX 1080s, they were solid. Um, the previous, not the previous build, but the build before I did to a guy, we used the gaming X version, air cooled, and again that was a solid card. Um, but you can see it's a hefty card, quite weighty. The water block covers the main chip all the way across, and I'm glad that it's got a metal back plate. And it's also vented as well, so it's quite quite a nice design, I've got to admit. But nice card. Put that at the side. So that's the main part for water cooling. We'll talk about the case last. So to water cool the 6700K, we're going to use uh, a decent block. And again, this is new. And this is EK water block. And I've used these in many builds. Uh, as long as you use decent thermal paste, you get decent performance. And this at the moment is on sale on uh, Overclockers UK. They've dropped the price down to 25%, so it's around 35 pounds for the block, brand new. And it's a solid block, never had any issues with it, uh, as long as you use a decent uh, fluid um, with it, uh, so there's no buildup of algae. Um, the fittings we're gonna be using, is gonna be EKs as well. Uh, this is gonna be a soft tube um, build just because of budget constraints and we're going to go uh, hard tubing uh, now the pump pump because of the size of the graphics card and the size of the case the case is a midi case um, the location that I originally wanted to put it is not going to be possible so I had to come up with a solution and the solution is a bracket which is going to go over 120 mil space on the radiator facing inwards and then be able to mount it. There's other options for the pumps, but that means I would have to lose the hard drive cage and that's not fair on the client because if he wants to expand and put extra drives, he won't have nowhere to put it. Um, I've used this pump on my son's PC that I built him two years ago. So you can check that out on the YouTube channel and uh, He's been using it for two years, pretty much every day, and it's been running fine. Three three years warranty with it. It's got a life of five years running, so 100,000 hours. So, great little pump. We'll open it up so you can see. I already took it out of the box. Double check. So you can see inlet, outlet, two ports at the top uh, to fill into vent. Uh, we're gonna mount this on a bracket and we're actually gonna be facing inwards. But I'll show you that in the case because we're gonna take the case apart. So crack in little pump. Um, ideally I would like to use a, a bigger reservoir, um, but because the size uh, of the graphics card is quite large um, as in length then it's blocking the side and you'll see what I mean uh, radiators wise and you you're not going to see the a lot of 
build with this case with the setup that I'm doing and the reason being is because of space but I'm going to try and fit a 360mm radiator at the front with a 240 at the top um, and they're going to be slim radiators now straight away uh, right Hi Steli, uh, no that's not for a personal rig, this is for a client of mine. Um, uh, the gel GG is going to be soft tubing. Um, hot tubing is a pain but I do love doing it. Yeah, but budget constraints. Um, How often do you change liquid? Um, well, it depends on what liquid you use. I tend to use distilled water uh, with some uh, biocide. Uh, some people want it colored, so in this case, we're going to be using, I'll show you in a minute, the. Because the client requested a red and black. So we're actually going to use Mayhem's. Uh, UV red so I've used this before it's good stuff um, not my personal favorite I prefer no color but that's just me uh, I have to keep reminding myself this is not for me it's for, for a client and I have this problem every time I do a build because I always try to make it as if it was for me <laughs> it's a habit um, but yeah if you use distilled water and if you're mixing metals like copper and nickel and brass, because sometimes you don't even know what type of uh, metals used by the manufacturers, um, it's hassle, almost hassle-free. With these really nice, cool-looking pastel uh, liquids, um, they're for shows. The, you know, you, you go to J2 Sense and it'll show you the problems that you had with some of the uh, chemicals that are used, uh, some of the fluids. Um, so it's personal choice okay whatever works for you i'm just explaining what i've used on the experience that i had in the last 15 15 years i've been water cooling and this plain distilled water for years i've been getting distilled water which is a liter for like 49p and that's the stuff you put on your car battery and it's worked just fine you can use you know branded distilled water but uh, the best place I used to get it from was from Halfords and B&Q and even the still water that you put on the iron uh, That's like the olden days, but there you go um, Going back on track from radiator. I'll try and keep an ounce Yeah So the radiators that I'm using and I probably will get a lot of stick because I'm, I'm using magical radiators. I'll put this over here. So, it's a very thin radiator, okay? And you're going to be wondering, well, why aren't you using thicker radiators? Well, one, cost. But secondly, thickness to surface area, surface area will always win, okay? So, you can either put a 60 mil thick radiator, 360 mil. And if I go and put, for example, half that size, a 30 mil radiator, but more of them, the more surface area that you have to cool the liquid, the better. That's on my experience. You might disagree with it, okay? Um, but it's, it's up to you. Uh, I'm just talking from my experience. I've got thicker radiators, I've got EK, I've got Phobia, um, I'll show you. easier to show than to uh, try and explain. You could get something like this, okay? You know, 45s or a behemoth like this, okay? But I guarantee you the difference, um, 
uh, you sell the kids away. The kids are in bed, but I put this up so I don't disturb the missus. So yeah, I put a seal so now I can actually walk on the top of the, of the latch. There you go. So before I get a lot of stick saying, oh, you're using some cheap pass uh, radiators, they're not thick enough, you know, I used over my builds a different range of radiators. Um, for example, I use Coolgate and very underrated product is phenomenal for cooling. I had a rendering machine with a 480 like this with four graphics cards overclocked, a processor overclocked with just a 480 and it worked fine. Okay, so it's it's personal choice, but when you're faced with budget constraints, you have to make a decision and that was one of my decisions. So yeah, that is the 360. Um, the only, when you go budget like this, inlet ports and outlet ports, you only have two. So you're limited on the positions of where you, you can put it. So unfortunately, where the case I'm going to be using, I have to set them up at the top. But that's what it is. Again, any questions, just let me know. Um, no, mate, the, I built that from scratch. It's uh, reinforced on the, uh, and it can take 175 kilos. I'm 110, so I'm all right. Well, thanks for your concerns, Sally. Next one, again. Open this up so you can see. Again, 240mm, I'm just going to go with the top. Um, depending how the tubing is going to go, there could be a possibility of putting a 120mm in the rear exhaust. But again, nice and simple. Fin, this is the fin, does it, I don't know if you can see that. You can see my hand through it. So it's not super dense. So you don't need uh, massive powered static pressure fans to push air through. Uh, the fans we're going to be using, I'll cover in a minute, so you'll be able to see. Anyway, I'm going to put this all back. So the case we're going to be using for the build, oh, I've still got the power supply. So originally, on the specs, the power supply. Um, okay. Very simple. Again, I'm going to get shit loads of stick for the choice of fans that I use. And I can show you the fans. I've got absolutely shit loads of different fans that I've tested. Okay. Now, if you want a super quiet system, a water cooled or air cooled, right? Using airflow fans on a water cooling PC is fine. As long as the uh, FPI. So fins per inch on the radiator is not dense, okay? So it's not fully packed. Um, I've got a, a rig that I've used. I'll move this so you can actually see down there. And that's on a 420 with some Corsairs AF super quiet fans, all right? And that was working just fine. The fans we're gonna be using are actually top notch fans because the case that we're going to be using for the build is a Corsair's 460XRGB. Um, they come with three static pressure fans, RGB. For me, RGB is not a big deal, but comes with a case, brilliant. Comes with a controller, okay. And the advantages, the Acer software that, uh, that's used in this motherboard is ace they have a aces i ai center where you can tune the fans to your liking as long as you have uh, pwm fans you'll be able to spin them down 
you can control the spin up and spin down so you can put them to operate super quiet and still get the cooling performance enough through the radiators even if you've got overclocked gpus cpus so i tend to use corsair fans i've used thumbtech and I've also used all sorts Now, for the purists out there, they virtually say, oh, you need super strong static pressure fans, like something like this. It's a Notchwa Industrial 3000 RPM. Yeah, but if you have 3000 RPM next to you, ain't gonna be very quiet, all right? Then, again, Corsair, static pressure, basic but personally I prefer to use the same version of it except it's airflow so there you are I also used uh, cooler master fans fan tech so I've tested a lot of fans you know it's not that I'm talking bullshit so um, let's have a look uh, typhoon 1800 uh, you know that's actually quite high I mean I mean still how loud is your PC because I've got mine running just below a thousand and my PC has got six fans next next to my microphone here I've got them all piped down under a thousand um, but yeah the fan itself is fine but if you can get a controller yeah six fans all at 1850 rpm that must be loud so we're kind of diverting from what I've been talking about but these are the fans that we're going to be using you see that like that there you go so this is a separate kit that I bought okay so what motherboard have you got Steli? no 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 you're all right this is there's no rush in, on, on the build <laughs> I've got till the 7th to build it's not a problem so um, what motherboard have you got and what uh, does it have built-in software that you can actually use to control your fans because most buyers I mean, I use Asus boards, so I don't know other brands. MSI's got it as well. We within the buyers, so you got Asus. So you've got the software already. So you've got a workstation um, motherboard. Guarantee you, if you go into the buyers right now and press F6, which gives you as uh, the tuning uh, side on within the buyers, and it will detect all your fans that's connected to the board. It will spin them up maximum revs and then pipe them down okay um or go to the support page on asus website for that specific motherboard and download the latest versions of asus ai suite which is number three download that and there's a section within that software that's called um i'll bring mine up so so you can actually see bear with me so I try to help out bear with me minimize that um, so when you get into here I don't know if you can see the no you can't see my uh, cursor go into fan expert once you go into it you'll have all your fans detected press fan tuning and what that will do it will identify all your fans once that's um, identified it will ramp up all your fans to maximum speed bring them down bring them down bring them down and then you can manually choose a spin up and spin down or select a profile so based on the fans that you have and if you have six of them all the same you'll be able to select silent and that will actually turn off some of the fans 
if need be. Standard will be quiet, turbo will be spin up a little bit and full speed will give you the full 1850 RPM. Um, so you can see here, it's, look, some of the fans, bring that out, wrong screen. Dup. This is mine. I'm not even running over a thousand. And the reason you're going to see all of them, I've got a splitter um, on my fan so we won't recognize it, but it still applies it. So there you go. And you can see all my stuff. And temperatures is fine. You know, nothing massive. All right. So hopefully. Um, it depends on your budget. When it comes to fans, um, it depends on your budget. You know, if you've got the money and you want super quiet Notchua, I know that they do the the brown versions, but they also do uh, black versions if you can get them. Um, they are super super quiet. Um, I used Corsair for years because they never let me down. But Notchua, yeah, but they're about you know. 15 quid a fan so it, it again depends on your budget all right so hopefully you found that uh, useful Put that back. so you got a 400 480 mil radiator and a 240 you know, there's also, uh, you don't owe me a beer, you know, we're just trying to help out for sharing knowledge, that's what uh, what I do. Um, there's also third party software you, you can get uh, where you can manually tune the actual fans via each port and the fan itself. Um, so just Google up uh, fan monitoring software and there's absolutely loads of them for free. Right. case so the reason I got this kit is because uh, the case itself already has three of these fans it's obviously got the controller the case itself got a controller so I'll just pull one out so you can actually see so um, for a static pressure fan, I got to admit, I don't know if you can see that. It is super quiet fan, uh, which actually surprised me because I was expecting to be a lot, a lot louder. So when I went to the actual software and even piped them down, I was really surprised. So I used the same six fan setup on a gaming build that I did for a client uh, on the same case, but in white. And you can check that video out on my YouTube channel if you want. Um, the only thing that annoys me with Corsair and other manufacturers of RGB fans is that two separate cables. So you've got a cable for your fan, which is a three pin or four pin. Then you've got your RGB. And Corsair does not supply with the kit a fan hub. So they expect you to connect the fans directly to the board. Well, when you've got six of them, and depends, this board's got absolutely loads of uh, fan heathers, but um, when you've got a lot of fans and, uh, like, say, uh, a budget board, you don't have the fan heathers, where are you going to plug them in? You have to use a fan hub, and we're going to be using a Fantech hub for it. But, yeah. So, if you're looking for a quiet fan for your setup, and you you know you you are with the RGB following uh, personally lighting in a PC is decent okay but when manufacturers charge you an extra 20 30 quid on a three fan kit just because it's got RGB lighting and it still performs the same as a non RGB lighting um, fan you got to question it is but again it's the personal choice but again on this build the reason I got it was because of the case and I'll cover that now put this everything back well 
hopefully when I'm away from the PC because the plan was to use two separate microphones and uh, was using a Rode mic that I use on my camera but unfortunately it's over here it won't have nothing with it get crashing so I have to go back to my main microphone which you can see there so apologies for the movement of cameras but try to tidy up as I go along again try to keep up with chat uh, yeah not bad about lighting on a computer but some people you know RGB if there's one thing on PC building is the RGB craziness on everything um, and I'll look at it up here I don't mind RGB on a keyboard I play games pitch black great to see the keys don't mind RGB on within the motherboard but now you've got RGBs on monitors, on mouses, on microphones, on power supplies, on on RAM sticks, on, it's just absolutely everything and it just puts a massive premium on costs. So when you try to build a PC with new parts um, and you post your picture of your PC on a forum, people slag you off, oh it doesn't have, you need RGB, RGB. Well, RGB does not add to the performance of the PC. It adds to the looks, I give you that, but it doesn't add to the performance. So you're spending a massive part of your money, of your budget, on RGB lighting that does not add to the actual performance of the PC. So you people buy lesser parts so they can get RGB versions or whatever it is. What can I say? It's a deep story. Keep everything together, so. But, I mean, what's your thoughts on RGB? Right. Oh. I'd like to pan out so you can actually see. Let me know if you want me to change any of the camera angles. So I just want to put it right so you can actually see the, the case. Uh, right, the mic arm I'm using, and I got two of them of the same because I picked one at a super cheap bargain on eBay. It's the Rode. Uh, PSA1 and it's a phenomenal solid solid arm um, I had one for three years I've got and I bought a new uh, second one I bought at like a quarter of the price on eBay uh, there's a few bits missing with it which I found and yeah solid uh, if you've got a heavy mic and you don't want your microphone to keep tilting um, yeah spot on UK Ghost 2, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, so you got a manufacturer, yeah, good point. Um, there's a manufacturer that's uh, selling a dual kit RAM sticks with RGB, but it comes with four, and two are actually fake, but it's got the lights on, because a lot of people don't want, they want to fill all the slots of, you know, more RAM the better, you know, as they say, 6428. Um, yeah, and they pay a stupid price for it. So that's vain. What's the point? Just because it looks good, you know, dual channel, but there you go. But manufacturers actually making blank uh, RAM stick so you can fill it, but there you go. 
and ram prices are not cheap they costed they jumped on price last year and it's ridiculous you know you go for a 16 gig kit and if you can find a decent one for under a hundred pounds you'll be lucky but anywho so as you can see i've been already taking the case apart um the panels so tempered glass front and side and um, so with any case i strip it down bare put everything safe so especially tempered glass because it shatters so easily uh, but once it's on it's on case itself it's a midi case like i said it's corsair 460 you've got your 3120 rgb fans at the front now with the case itself what uh, corsair has done they've virtually added within the price the controller for the rgb fans and also the controller to control the different mode speeds that's been wired up to a controller panel which is a lighting kit panel so one button chooses your color another button chooses your speed and then your mode so you have two choices you can use the case one or you can physically change it but because the back panel is going to be on you're not going to have access to that i've seen some people mount that outside the case um so some non corsair cases uh, won't have these buttons but there you go um case itself will support atx motherboard i already tested it as you can tell i still have the our shield already in so i'll just check wow oh kudoki uh, Spartacus useless couldn't care less yeah, fair enough everybody's got their own opinion um, so used this case before white version um, so under here you've got your hard drive case for your 3.5 uh, drives so we're going to install one already taking the drive base out and this is where this actually comes out completely so if you wanted to put a pump at the bottom straight up you could but because the graphics card comes all the way across to here if you can see that yeah um you will virtually have limited options and you'll see why so sorry, try to find, yeah zooms in so the 360 mil radiator is going to be at the front the 240 is going to go at the top the port's going to be at the top as well and the way that the loop is going to work is going to go pump to cpu cpu to the 240 the 240 to the graphics card the graphics card is going to go down root through the back straight up into the to the 360 and then the 360 to the reservoir so again when you're designing a water cool loop as long as you have reservoir pump and then whatever item you want to call anything after that is up to yourself um, personally i would have it going to one one component to a radiator to another component to a radiator so you're not passing heat one to the other but because the flow is going all the way around it's evenly distributed so even if you put cpu gpu then radiator you still have the same benefits it's virtually depending on the case that you're using and what's the easiest shortest route um in regards to the loop the longer the loop the more pressure you're going to need on the pump and that's why a lot of people's pumps burn out because they have massive complicated loops and the head pressure of the pump i mean this little pump actually pushes 3.2 meters which is plenty for this but um cheap pumps that you find on ebay they don't have a lot of head pressure and when they virtually put it up they'll work but they'll the, the lifespan of it will cut dramatically so all of a sudden the pump fails liquid's not flowing through temperatures go high and then they wonder why the pc is um shutting down because virtually your pump died but yeah um all depends on the case so in this case because of the where the spaces are that's what we're going to do uh, last thing to cover is just the fittings so 
spent a lot of time. So we're going to use a mixture of fittings. So the, the actual fittings that we're going to be using is, I'll show it there, it's EKs, okay, matte black, straightforward, I've used them before, o-rings are fine, um, and some of the angles we're going to be using use some uh, Barrow 45 degree angles and also some EK's uh, 90 degree angles so depending on where you're at, um, depending on the angles that we go on our tubing I tend to use a lot of a lot of these so you simple straightforward if you've got a tight bend from a component attach it done so you've got no kinks so easy way to shoot easy way to uh, do a loop if the budget was bigger I would be able to use some of these these are monsoons um, fittings nickel a uh, little bit more premium but again this is budget and for probably won't recognize these because they don't make them anymore but these going back a few years these are EK's nickel I also have chrome and these are going way way back and I took this from a build of mine I kept them because they never leaked ever so do you use a range oh, everyone see that did you know that EVGA made water cool fittings probably won't see these anymore so like I said I've been doing water cooling for a long time so I do have a lot of fittings everywhere but, um, Another, another underrated brand is XSPC and what we're going to do with every water cool build I always do a drain valve uh, we're going to be putting a drain valve so it just made it easier for the customer to flush the system out if he needs to do so um, I've done builds in the past without one uh, with the easy option with the tube on the reservoir and tip your PC upside down um, but to make it easier for the client you know, and these you know it doesn't cost a fortune and you just couple this up with a with a coupler which coupler like that so you go male and male hook that up put that up on any quarter inch uh, port so depending on how the loop will go on this you can even put it on a spare yeah you want to put this in the lowest part of your loop but in some cases that's not possible in this case this is not going to be possible because the uh, radiator ports are going to be at the top so most likely it's going to be either near the pump or the actual uh, graphics card so as long as you have a way to get the liquid out that's what matters because uh, again people think well you're not going to get all the liquid out a little simple trick it's an airtight uh, loop as long as you have an outlet somewhere you can always put a tube with a with a fitting and a piece of tube on the reservoir and you simply blow that's it's as simple as that you'll be able to use your lung pressure to push the liquid out on the outlet which is your valve done you know it's not rocket science it's just common sense 
but a lot of people do a lot of complicated systems because they adamant that the laws that you have to <laughs> blow um, you have to put it to, at the bottom yes it makes it easier I've got to admit that but if some of the cases and the parts you're using you can't do that then use your use your just your common sense anyway I think I've covered all the parts the only thing that I'm going to change on the build from the original spec sheets is the power supply now originally I was going to with the Corsair 650X which I'm at tested it on my, my test rig down here where I test all my fans and virtually graphics cards stuff like that but and it'll be sufficient you know if people say you need a thousand watt power supply for your system you don't okay um, by quality better than quantity of watts a 650 with a i7 600k and a GTX 1070 is fine as long as you've got a good gold tier power supply all right Steli says my mom used to always say I have no common sense which is worrying since the work I do yeah you work don't I remember you saying your multi-million pound place and yeah <laughs> I'm sure you have common sense you just don't know it that's all um, so I decided just to future proof a little bit because even if you're on a budget you can still future proof a PC so I'm gonna we're gonna go with a RM 850 gold power supply reason for that is if he wants to put a second card in an SLI then you'll have the headroom on the 12 volt rail with a 650 you, you won't be able to run it and still have headroom to overclock all right so we're going from a 650 to an 850 just to future proof it in case he wants to add a second card and if he wants to do that then he doesn't have to replace the power supply so it's, it's not cheap but um, let's say because this is a one-off build I'm going to include it at the same price now the specs that you have seen and because most of it is new you will not be able to build this new for a thousand pounds with all the same specs and if you can find somebody that can pay them and get it done okay so that's my say little gift to Richie future proofing your system giving a better um, ultra quiet power supply the 12 volt rail is solid you can get two graphics cards running on this not a problem all right so that is all the parts so we're cracking with the case so any questions at all so far I think I tried to cover as much as I could. So, Stelly, you've got a, yeah, 1200 watts Super Flower. Is that the white edition? Storage, I'm using, I'm using a, a Western Digital SSD for the operating system. Um, for the system and a uh, Seagate Barracuda 2 terabyte. On my personal system I use a Samsung uh, SSD 850, it's quite old but it does the job. Uh, I had that on RAID 0, uh, two of them and then I've got total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 drives, it's about 12 terabytes of um, yeah it's the green version again Oh, really understated um, brand for SSDs but I tested the speed of the SSD write and read compared to a Samsung and almost on par and the price difference is almost double you know you can get it for under 40 quid 240 gig SSD under 40 pounds 
that's got 500 read, 500 write. Bloody bargain. Right, time to start taking these fans apart. So, what I do a build, I strip the case bare. I, I have them. <laughs> I've used them on some builds. I'll show you. I test a lot of drives. So, that's what I've currently been using on some of the high end builds. Yeah, I test a lot of drives, a lot of SSDs. So, from ScanDisk, from Intel, Samsung, most Samsung. You probably recognize the brand and the symbol, because you got a Nux. Yeah. So yeah, the write and read speeds on the NVMe M.2 drives, if you've got the motherboard that takes fully advantage of the 3500 pop write and read, uh, it's phenomenal for having an operating system. But if you try to get a terabyte of the same type of drive, it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg. Rich D. Teflon, thank you, Serge. Christmas come early. <laughs> uh, hi, Rich. How are you doing? Yeah, PSC SSD. Yeah. Again, a lot of people still use mechanical hard drives for the operating system, but SSDs now are affordable, where you can clone your drive and bring it over and it will automatically speed up your system because of the quicker read and fast uh, speeds. Oh, excuse me. Bear with me. Well, thanks very much for sticking around, Stelly. Much appreciated. It's been actually nice talking with somebody that knows what they're talking about. So, I'm going to take the fans off. I'm still playing with the space, so hopefully the sound will be alright because I've got the mic right at the back. So apologies if the sound goes a bit, um, a bit shit, but, right. So, we're going to be using the same fans and mount the radiator to it. It's a shame that the uh, the bracket, it actually arrived today, but my missus wasn't home, so the person who decided to leave me a blooming collector at the post office, but you can't collect them on the same day, you have to wait for the following day, which is a bit of a bugger. But I've got two brackets because I've got two ideas on how I want to mount it. And one is flat against the radiator. And I, I want to test how that impacts on the airflow on one of the fans. And the other one is slightly raised, which will look like the pump and reservoir is floating me there. So, again, if you have any questions on water cooling, loops, or components, or ideas feel free to shout out I'll keep turning and looking at the chat like that's very kind of you considering I've not streamed anything for the last two years I gave twitch total control to Richard and he streamed a few times then you know a few things happen in the his life and uh, didn't do much. I concentrated on YouTube until about a year ago. 
so this is the first time I've done a full stream um, on Twitch really tested on Tuesday yeah Tomb Raider oh god blimey that was one AJ Andrew came up and stayed over the weekend he was playing oh what was it yeah uh, Black Ops 3 and I kept supplying with cider so he's getting pissed and pissed further um, but he, funny enough he actually came up uh, about uh, yeah a week ago stayed over I uh, brought his PC with him we gave him a once over um, and sorted it out did an overclock on his uh, aging CPU managed to get another gigahertz out of it we put a uh, a all-in-one water cooling unit on it for him um, hence why you can see at the back again I do a lot of testing of different uh, all-in-one air cooling units um, I don't know if you've seen uh, Aces brought their own version with a little OLED screen on the actual pumps itself where you can put your own logos and stuff and messages a bit of a gimmick but they're using really decent fans uh, you're thinking of upgrading your Intel i7 6950X right right okay so that means you're gonna change your whole chipset because 5950X is the highest tier you can get on your motherboard X99 I do miss my headphones because normally I'm not talking when I'm uh, building or doing any work on PCs. But it's always a first for everything. Now, to be fair, give credit to Corsair, they actually attempted to uh, keep it tidy. So I'm uh, undoing all the hard work that they've done. But you'll be surprised how many cases you get, and everything's just chucked in with the back panel, and you open it spewed out like the scene from Aliens. Oof. Yeah. They also use their own propriety connectors on on their RGB fans. So you never stop talking. <laughs> yeah, I I, look, I love technology. Okay, I think the last year and a half has been a shit show for. Oh, hello. Focus, focus, thank you. Uh, it's been a shit show, really, for tech. Um, a combination of things. Number one, uh, the mining craze. Number two, the absolute dick moves by uh, memory manufacturers um, creating a false shortage to inflate prices. Um, CPUs, don't get me started, I think, one of the biggest kudos is AMD for bringing out the Ryzen to finally give some competition to Intel. Um, the absolute crap that Intel, and I use Intel processors, I've used AMD processors, but going back to this generation, the Z170 um, rushed out, do you bring your Z270 which is the same socket and then you can bring coffee lake which is the same socket but they want you to upgrade to a different motherboard even when the motherboard manufacturers stated that as long as intel gives us the bias coding on their chips there's no problem you using existing z270 motherboards for their coffee lakes and they've done it again right with the bring the 8700k 1151 not a problem they've launched the 8086k which is the anniversary version of the same chips but higher clock 
and everybody's gone crazy about the 9900K on the same socket. And this time, oh yes, you can use it with the Z370 motherboards, but they're bringing out the Z390s. And all it is, is the same friggin' chip with more cores, two extra cores, so from six to eight, with boosted clocks to two of the cores to five gigahertz. And people are surprised it runs hot, but they've done the right thing. They've used solder instead of some crappy thermal paste. And even that they didn't get right. So people are saying, oh God, um, overclocking it across all cores is running hot. Well, surprise, surprise. It was running hot on the 8700K, hence why people deleted it. At the 8086K, people deleted it. So yeah, for me, I'm still going way, way back to 4790K. Um, there's no need for me to upgrade. Uh, for what I do but a lot of people say higher number the better and they're saying us oh, the next generation GPU it isn't it's a frigging refresh they haven't done a new generation because they changed from TikTok to 14 nanometer plus 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 so yeah um, I think people are misinformed especially when Intel paid a separate company or sorry commissioned um a separate company to benchmark their hardware before launch and frigging gave false reports in the performance versus the rise in the 2700x and they got officially caught and they got retested and they were showing a 60 percent improvement in certain certain games and it actually was 12 percent so it's, uh, it's the same thing, but what hasn't changed, they'll put a premium, an extra hundred pounds. So if you want the latest 9900K, 600, 500 and 600 quid, really? 600 quid. People forget about the 5960X, the thousand pound CPU, that was an eight core, 16 threads. Don't see them selling that now. So yeah, and don't get me started with Nvidia, really. Nvidia, they never change. Um, so, uh, UK is still rocking 4790K, spot on. Yeah. Um, Nvidia with the RTX 2000 series. Okay. Um, it's the biggest and it's going to be the shortest run GPU and you'll understand why in a minute. Nvidia has shitloads of return cards from OEM uh, suppliers returned back to them. And when they're talking a couple of thousand, like 300,000, half a million, okay? So they're stuck with these thousand series graphics cards. So how do you shift them? very easily uh, release a product overprice it to the smithereens considering the the 280 uh, ti cost more than their flagship titan x okay so it becomes performance of the rtx 280 it's like okay so why would i upgrade it from 1080 ti so all of a sudden 1080 ti becomes a bit of a great bargain now if you're buying a new, this is a new card that's going to replace the thousand series but nvidia has not stopped selling the thousand series cards why because they have shit loads of them to shift and the reason they have loads of them is because they've done the same mistake that amd did years ago with the mining craze they overproduced because of the mining craze and virtually got returned loads back from their uh, oem suppliers so there you go. So come January, February, the ATX is going to be the shortest lived GPU you're going to see. And one of the biggest things that just boils, here's a question. Would you buy a car that has the possibility of doing 250 miles an hour, but when you get in it, you can't get to 250 miles an hour because it needs an update. Uh, that's what RTX with ray tracing 
that's the big selling point. That's the reason you need to upgrade. Ray tracing, you need ray tracing in your life. Um, but you can't use it on anything. You can blame Microsoft. You can blame game developers not implementing it. But if I remember correctly, when you launched the card, you had the demo of Shadow of Tomb Raider with RX on, RX off. And Shadow of Tomb Raider has been out for a while and still hasn't received an update. So you tell me. Ta -da. Yeah. 1500 quid. If you want a decent RTX water cooled, 1500 quid. So st starting price, 1000 pounds. Really? No. I, I, I just, yes, you might have more CUDA cores. Uh, the overclocking speeds are not any higher than the current 1080 Ti. But yeah. So for the price of one graphics card, you can build a system and a decent system. So yeah, it is a friggin' joke and I agree with you. Um, but with AMD lack of competition on the high end, Nvidia can do whatever they want. I mean, they, you remember the, the 3,000 pound graphic, uh, uh, $3,000. So 2,700 pound Titan V, but it's not a gaming card. It's for AA compute. They got the balls to charge you that. But um, with AMD, with the seven nanometer Navi, possibly, but it's not gonna be, it's gonna be on the levels of the GTX 1080. So Nvidia's not worried about that. Okay, so. And unfortunately, AMD Radeon was screwed because the main person that was pushing the uh, the Vega and the Ryzen CPUs are not, is now working at Intel because Intel is making their own division for graphics cards. So yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting year and a half. So even though I've been out of the tech scene, I always you know keep uh, my ear to the ground of what's going on. And uh, you know, thank goodness for YouTube because we can find out anything anywhere. Challenging in this case, and because I've experienced it before, uh, this, the cable management. Um, we've got to go to got to get it right and because we're adding a water cooling system as well. Um, I, don't know if you can, I don't know if you can see that. There's not. A, yeah, there's not a lot of space, so you've got to be really clever with your cable management because if you don't you won't be able to put the back panel back on um, there is you know this area which you can remove that but I don't want to remove that because then the customer loses out so if you want to put extra SSDs you can put all three up there um, uh, cable management nightmare well if you if you look look up a guy called uh, Stefan Itian you probably would know of him he did a fantastic build with great cable management for the Verge. Just look it up. Um, I was involved in a campaign on the day that that video came out. Um, and I contacted that guy and the actual owner of the channel of the Verge with a list. And I contacted pretty much every YouTuber. And finally, one YouTuber started doing a video about what is this about because this is so factually wrong and then the ball rolled and all the big youtubers started doing videos um yeah so uh it yeah and stephanie Etienne, you didn't even bother to respond i facebooked him i messaged him on twitter and i caught a glimpse of his stream i think it was the day after 
and he called virtually some uh, some uh, YouTube news was kicking off uh, because his PC it works so it's fine and there was some fundamental if you get a chance have a look at it um, they've since pulled the video down but there is probably 20 30 videos of people checking the video and doing a reaction and it is like Ugh! but a ho but like I said this stream this isn't a how to build a PC I'm just doing what I normally do if it's right or wrong that's your opinion uh, I'm just going from nobody taught me stuff learnt so these screws little handy tip on your building give yourself one of these simple tray keep your screws all separated so you don't lose anything you'll be surprised um, and when your screws got lost now Corsair very kindly provided some motherboard screws with the fan screws but the screws that I need, so I need to check if the radiator comes with them. It's these screws that I can attach the fan from the front straight through to the radiator. Oh. I am not <laughs> really. No, I'm not a pro. Okay. I'm just somebody that enjoys tech and that's it I am far from a professional if you want to see a professional when it comes to water cooling look at the likes of J2 cents uh, Kyle uh, those people like that because they do it for a living I've got a job full-time job this is a hobby so I'm definitely not a pro but thanks for the compliment in I'm going to create a spacing so I'll put it there to show you what I mean 
because originally I thought I could get rid of the front panel glass, have the fans on the outside and put it flat. But by putting the fans it will create the space that I need and I'm going to have to get near the wiring. So we're going to now compare the screws that came with the radiator, which we have enough for all three fans, which is a 360mm. And then compare the size and the which should be fine as long as the fan I mean cause uh, you could why can't you put this in one wire? It's just it's beyond me. And it's not just Corsairs, everybody does it. Oh look at that. So even though that uh, UK goes, one of us researched by a new tower, of course I all seem to be badly designed. What do you think? Well that depends. The budget ones, yes they are. Okay. If you go mid tier uh, pricing, um, I've used Corsair 900 ds for water cooling. Uh, they are absolutely fantastic design. But there's so many options out there now. So it depends on your budget. So tell me how much you're looking to spend on a case and what size. Is it going to be micro ATX, MIDI or full tower? Because now there's three, four, five different companies that provide really good quality design with airflow in mind, spaces for radiators if you want to go water cooling. It depends how many drives. I mean, down there on the floor, there if you can see it, the white case, that's a fractal design. Fractal design is a phenomenal design cases for both air and water cooling. The R5, the R6 is a phenomenal case. It just gives you so many different options, but it depends how much money you're willing to spend. Case labs. Well, case labs gone out to business. They're absolutely phenomenal case makers. Um, but they're out of business. They're going to liquidations, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, their case is a bit bulky, you know, the stacker system that they have. Um, but again, uh, great cases for water cooling, specifically for water cooling. Um, uh, I settled, okay. And the it is for 440. Okay, so, okay, step off on the 400. Okay, you got a Thumbtack. Okay, what model, uh, Stelly? Because I got, I just, well, I bought it from Overclockers because they had a bit of a sale on. Um, I got a uh, a tempered glass one, front and back, um, for a premium build. But it, I was so impressed with it, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to keep this to myself because I bought a, a super cheap price. And I put it down here, and it's the, the model just below the brand new one that they brought out the RGB one the Lux that's the one below that so but again the uh, the H440 is a decent case all oh, right you got the Primo okay yeah very decent case uh, overclockers use use it a lot for their water cooling systems so So the problem what I'm going to have is I normally put on the fans on the radiator before putting the case. So I'm going to pull up the pull up the uh, camera so you can actually see. Um, because of the limited space, I have to go on an angle. And if I put all the fans, I might not be able to get in. But we can try it. Use it, but it's came with it. It's, it's 
officially minimises vibrating, but like I said, the test of these fans, we're going to see what it looks like with them. If it looks naff, it does offer some damping on the actual vibrations in the fans, but we will see. Like I said, I don't plan to finish this build in one single stream, so we'll do bits. See if it offers. I'm just going to do a temporary. So I'm going to hopefully this will be your first fitting. Uh, Oh, Leon Lee. Uh, I do like the uh, PC010 uh, that they've uh, come out and there was a uh, a calibration they've done with the Bauer. Um, really cool case. Uh, except for whatever reason, doesn't come with fans. So you have to buy the fans separate. Uh, yeah. UK Ghost, yeah. If you get a decent design case that makes your life easier when it comes to cable management, you know you've got a decent case. Uh, it's the ones that virtually design for locks, which most of the cheap cases are with RGB fans, but no consideration on airflow and cable management when you put a system inside. Um, So what games are you guys playing at the moment? Anything? This is actually... If we set it away. If without the rubber mounting, is it going to touch the fins? Sometimes wrong screws that usually screws a decent size. You can always do with a uh, what I've first done. I'm trying to fit this type of screw through the radiator. New Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Okay. Uh. Four. Red Dead. Oh, the 28th. Oh, yeah. They never brought the original to the PC. Um, yeah. The demand is there, but where the money is for developers, the consoles. So, uh, yeah, that game looks phenomenal. Uh, if it's anything like the first one, I only played the first one on a console <coughs> years ago. Um, but that is one game that would push anybody on PC just to get a console just to play it. It's a system seller. Uh, but yeah, that's out on the 28th. But new Assassin's Creed. Uh, yeah, well, everybody is going with the way GTA Online, so that business model. If you look at what's happening, um, Red Dead 2, they're going to have an online mode. So that's the way you make the money. Most of the games now have loot boxes. So it's not about just the sale of the game, it's all about the loot boxes and you can 
frigging blame mobile gaming for that because that's firstly if you look I follow a guy called Angry Joe so it's the Angry Joe show American guy from Austin Texas and big big passion for gaming and he's been you know fighting campaigning against loot boxes you know years back years back even when it wasn't a full-blown thing and now it's, it's in everything and you can blame EA EA is one of the biggest corporates that they've virtually ruined it um, to the point where laws are being changed and banning and EA is just ignoring it uh, but yeah yeah one of my favorite episodes of Angry Joe is when uh, Battlefield 4 I think it was Battlefield 4 that came out or Battlefield 3 I'm not sure um, and it, you know the map that when the building gets destroyed it used to crash the game and that was like one of one of the first videos that I saw that he was proper passionate you know he hired servers his friends build a brand new uh, PC and the game kept crashing so yeah buh, buh, buh. Battlefront is the biggest yeah well firstly it had no content since it got released so they chopped the game into pieces that's what people you know it is frustrating because there's been some really good game developers being taken over and bought by EA and just you know Bioware you know great great companies um, I am looking forward to one game and uh, Cyberpunk because the developer it's been s solid all the way through you know The Witcher 3 is one of my favourite series um, and playing right from the start said no loot boxes no pay to win simple as Dark Souls, tough game, Dark Souls 3, yeah, some good games, I personally haven't had much time gaming, when you're a dad of two and you work full time and you manage not one but two families, um, gaming, it's um, finding time to enjoy the titles, even though that I've got the hardware to play and to use, Then I prefer to build. So, guys, I don't expect you to stick around all the way through. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to stream for. But just like I said, I'm going to do three tests fits. This is the first one, putting the radiators in. I'm going to put the motherboard in. I'm going to see how long the graphics card is. Um, I probably would have done this a lot quicker if I wasn't speaking, but it's been really great speaking with you guys. So much appreciated for you guys sticking around. Thank you. So I hope the sound quality is alright. If not, let me know. I can try and talk louder. But I had the microphone set up right to the front, but OBS kept knocking it off. Most likely we'll take these uh, pads away. I want to see, because I've tested the fans without the pads. Um, a previous build uh, so I want to see if they actually do anything if they do any damping at all if they do brilliant because I've used them on a the pass but on a 140 mil see this is that the boring it's not quite right Oh, Sterling, Dark Siders 3, by any chance? 
Yeah, excellent game. It took ages though to bring a, another game on the series. But yeah, the first was spot on. I tell you what, you got a lot of patience. I just <laughs> Dark Souls Three <laughs> I died a lot. That's all I can say. There's certain games that I'm good at and certain games that I'm not. And it's one of those I do like games with a decent campaign. So what what is your thoughts um, on the Call of Duty Black Ops 4? I'm just putting that together. I'm not fooling pulling all the fans fully in because this is just a test fit I want to see if I can actually fit it with the fans on uh, can I can answer your question uh, the answer is yes I thought I might not be able to do it but spot on case attached on and dusted really uh, da -da -da. Nah. yeah um, <laughs> black ops for quick cash in on the massive craze that is the Fortnite well PUBG really and then Fortnite got more popular than PUBG and it's yeah battle royale mode so you've got a game that retails a full whack price with no main campaign they took that out and it's only online multiplayer yeah okay but if they took the main campaign away why are they selling the same price as it was a full whack game with a campaign. Colonialist. I'll bear that in mind. I'll bear that in mind. Put the two four in. company same brand but the design is slightly different on the screws I don't know if you can see that so you've been looking at the case uh, yep I can see that put that out of the way we don't need that right. Since I've been uh, uploading to YouTube, a lot of people keep telling me and asking messages, how come you don't um, 
upload you know how to build and all that well, the main reason is that it takes so bloody long to record and edit if you can see that it's not actually gone through That's why I decided to do uh, a stream instead. Still some imperfections. Uh, Call of Duty 4 on Xbox 360 took you months. Yeah. I, I got to admit, multiplayer FPS games, some people love it, some people are really good at it. Um, I lost my love for it. Um, I enjoyed it on uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and the original. I thought that was probably the peak. And then they messed it up with the Modern Warfare Infinite. Um, I would love it if they remastered the second one again. But yeah, certain games I just lost the love for. And FPS are just because it's. I even tried um, Fortnite with my boy, and it's a fun game, don't get me wrong. But Battle Royale mode just makes you fucking stressed, and you just want to chill when you're gaming. Dreamcast, the console that was never fully reached its full potential. Amiga, wow, you're going way back. Bloody hell. But uh, Dreamcast, you know, there's a humongous following. Even though they stopped making it, there's still developers making games for it because the following is so massive. Um, I follow a guy um, on YouTube and he restores all consoles and he's trying to get um, let's see if I can find it if you like that sort of thing just bear with me his name and I'll post you the link is uh, Adam and he is trying to get a massive collection uh, of all the games for the old consoles but he's a big massive uh, fan of uh, of the Dreamcast here's his channel um, great guy really passionate about uh, console gaming he doesn't do like a multiplayer or anything but the super snares the old consoles the rare consoles now it's a bit of a retro collector's feel uh, yeah check check him out he's, uh, he's a decent guy He's American, but he's got a good sense of humour. Um, but there you go. Tell you one person that would love to be here would be Andrew Edge Atomica. He said he always wanted to tinker and do a watercolor build. And to be fair, he was here the other week and stayed open, and we kind of tested some uh, all of all than one watercooling units. And um, I could have done a, a build with him, but you know when you're just not in the right frame of mind. And um, yeah, he brought this PlayStation Four with him, so he's playing the new Spider-Man and God of War, which is a phenomenal game. You can see that of the actual heads. So even though it's the same company, same type of radiator, just because there's a 240. And 
that's the length. So a little tip for you, always check your screws because when you're putting a screw through, I'll say you did a mistake and put that through, well, what happens you would pierce the actual fins. And you might not even notice you pierced it because it'll go through and then you fill up your system and you also have leaks coming from your radiator. And I don't understand why. Uh, I'm telling you this because I learned the hard way in the old days when you didn't have, now you tend to have pretty much a standard size screws but yeah uh, you still got on Amiga 1200 Jesus what do you think of Kickstarter surgery Kickstarter <laughs> uh, a Kickstarter for what maybe I missed something sorry I'm trying to catch up on the comments That's how much that will go into the radiator. And if you look in the radiator, I don't know if you can see that. You see the gapping? So it only takes a little bit too much when you bend the fins. The radiator's going to go to the top. So I need the fans, the wiring to go to the back of the case. This is only one port, so we want it that way. I hope this is worth fiddly bits because if we come to test it so at least they do provide you with the shorter screw so you can actually mount the radiator on the top. I don't think, unless there's a different bag that I missed on the 360, I can see if that came up. If you guys want any music, just post a, um, a link on you from YouTube on the chat box and I'll work it on. So hopefully with the fans the advantage with this case is that it has two mounting spaces so we can take a 280 but it also has a closer space to the front so it will minimize contact with the ram sticks uh, Kingdom Come Deliverance, yeah, that's a uh, like a night. I know I've heard, I did hear it, never played it. Uh, Stelly, how many systems have you got? Stelly's master master system, yay! Mega Drive, or as the Americans call it. 
They don't call it a Mega Drive. They call it a Genesis. Mega 500, Mega 1200. Hey. Where's the Commodore 64? Surely you have a Commodore 64 Stelly. I tell you one system that I had. Atari 2600. Top loaded cartridge. That's a retro collective now. Oh, 64. Sorry, mate. Didn't. Yeah, of course you would have a 64. That's a nice collection. Do you uh, do you use uh, CRT monitors, <laughs> or do you uh, do you use modern tellies to uh, to use them? LCD. Okay, fair enough. HTML upscaler. I'm, I'm tell you what, you're the sort of person you would love Adam's channel. Because if you go through some of his uh, past videos, he'll love his stuff. If you're into your retro consoles, which looks like you are. Nice to have peace and quiet. Kids are asleep. This is very kindly left me to it. Why is this not fitting? Well, that's how. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ. That's how that he went on fire. Jesus Christ. Man, you're lucky. You're lucky with that. All technology, eh? What was that actual the CRT unit coming? You said it was. Alright, so you, it was the actual unit itself, it wasn't the plug or anything like that. Bloody hell.
Hi Tom Bro V2. Uh, you've got a GTX 1070. Well, funny enough, that's what we're going to be using in our build. A Oracle version, anyway. But welcome. Omega 1200. You repaired it. So you're quite handy then, when it comes to electronics. No. You don't exactly tell me exactly what you do in your job, but I would assume it's not just the software side of things that you deal with, but also the hardware. If it isn't, excuse my ignorance. because then we can't mount a fan so we want as forward as possible as we can that allows it so we can put a fan on our fittings so we're going to do a trial fit plus plenty of gaps cool so far so good so we're going to put the motherboard in have a look at the spacing that we have. And Get all the same size. There you go. So you can see what I'm doing. But I'm sure. Every single person at some point has sorted out the motherboard. So you had the cloud services. Yeah, hardware. I thought, yeah, hardware and software. So you're a busy person then. A busy person. Now I can put the block if need be. But I can't put the block. But it's like a trial fit. See, the motherboard will dominate. I already checked that the risers were, were right. So it just fills it up. There's a small case. So I'll put a couple of screws to hold it in place. We'll check that we have. I love to lower our computer show. Yeah, unless you have a partnership with suppliers, um, yeah, you're gonna struggle and buy in volume to even be able to uh, to make a decent profit. You know, I see loads of little computer shops that are just leave, just shut can close down just because they're not they can't compete with online online businesses they can make a system ship it out to you done and dusted for like next to nothing but if you want high-end stuff that's where the money is um if you want bes bespoke that's where the money is um like one of a kind that sort of thing but you need to have a reputation to be able to price yourself to the point where you you can charge X amount. Um, again, if you're going for volume, then yeah, it, it, Amazon, eBay, 
you name it just a few sites that, that yeah, there's just so much competition and everybody's undercutting everybody but with it um, yeah I mean my sister who lives in the States um, her husband um, he works for a drone company you've probably heard of him uh, DGI and uh, he flies out to China uh, Shenzhen pretty much every uh, two three weeks and uh, in China the prices of the hardware stuff is so cheap so cheap but of course when you bring it across to US or to another country the taxes and everything just bumps it up uh, but yeah they have a lot of cheap hardware so I'm just temporarily just putting a couple of screws just hold it in place then I can actually put the 240 in the top just to see what space in there I have um, like I said it's just a trial fit so I'm not bolting everything down properly as such but I can see that hopefully Hopefully I'll have enough clearance. just uh, being here on my own but well, this is what I want to do and uh, I like problem solving just like that's why this case if you Google up the Corsair 460X and see how many water cool builds that do not have a all in one water cooler but have custom water cooling. And then have a look uh, how how many radiators people can actually manage to fit in. And then we'll see what sort of challenge I will uh, I'll have. Oh blimey, okay, uh, I, I've been using overclockers for years, uh, for a long long time and that's the place I go to for majority of my parts, as in I don't know personally, you know, people like you do, um, but customer service always been spot on, that's why I keep coming back to them, any issues? Um, all right, you're a moderator. Cool. Very nice. I I got to admit, uh, I for since I joined the forum, I haven't hardly touched anything because um, I've not been active as such. But it's one of those I prefer to be on the quiet side. But a nice one, moderator. Do. Uh, yeah, you would know this. Uh, they started uh, accepting Bitcoin as payment again for overclockers.
Yeah, because I remember well oh, years and years ago they did, and um, yeah, that's because I'm a, on the talkie walkie. I'm a coach um, there, and that's one of the questions I get asked a lot. Is I'm firstly the reason people are asking is that because of the since the crash of Bitcoin, people are stuck with Bitcoin. There, some are sitting till Christmas till it spikes up, which it will spike up again because the Chinese will sell for their new year um, but people want to want to spend it because it's not worth changing because at the moment Bitcoin is at what four four eight four nine uh, just on the 5k um, so yeah but yeah I know some uh, some businesses actually accept Bitcoin um, but not it's a bit of, a, bit of a risk with everything else. I wish I could see that. Oh, I wish I had my fourth camera. So you can see that. So sorry if I was just shaking the camera. I do have a mounting point up in the ceiling. So how is this? How much clearance have I got? Wow. You know what? If you got less than a half an inch on the round sticks. But with there. Uh, with there. Uh, so I'm gonna put it in. If I went with a thicker radiator, no way, no way that would, unless I would uh, drill some holes on the case itself and move it outwards even further, but uh, I do, not as much as I used to, I used to answer about a thousand questions a month, uh, but not for a while. Like I said, I only recently come back as such. Um, but there's quite a few people. Um, but to be fair, I think the number one is the person that actually works at Overclockers. Um, but yeah, I've answered over like 10,000 um, 10, questions. I don't mind helping out. The um, reason I, used, I started was at weekends. Because what I noticed um, when they introduced Toki Walkie that the weekends nobody would from Everclass would answer, so that's why I started answering. Um, and then uh, a few people got certified, including myself. So we tried helping out as much as we can. I did for about a year, non, but almost a year non-stop. So it was just something to do, you know, when I was on break from work or anything. Just so some of the questions you get, well, you know, there's Google, but. You know, you try to be as helpful as you can, uh, but not uh, as late. Uh, I think busy is the, <laughs> not kidding you, busy is an understatement, okay, and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, so, I don't know if you've got kids, but as soon as you've got kids, everything just complicates. Um, but uh, since last year, I not only have uh, my own family to deal with, um, which you know it's my responsibility but uh, since my father passed away uh, my mother and I've got a brother who's uh, dyslectic and so I have to virtually run two households so my mother doesn't drive so you have to think of everything that you do you know shopping all the appointments everything and I have to do that twice so that plus a full-time job and plus helping other people uh, kind of <laughs> minimizes the free time that um, allow me to do stuff like this. So um, it's been a tough, tough year. It's only now that I'm getting, got myself in the routine, got myself organized on both households. Um, but yeah, it's uh, free time is a privilege. 
that uh, a lot of people do not take advantage of. Uh, for me, it's one of those that if I can get it, I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, um, it's been a, what do you call it, a, a steep learning curve because my father unfortunately he passed away with lung cancer stage four. He was um, diagnosed just before Christmas and virtually at stage four, if you know anything about lung cancer, it, there's no there's no cure, there's no nothing. So they, they, they'll, they'll put you through the process of the same chemotherapy. My father didn't even get to that stage. Uh, my father passed away within nine weeks. Um, but we were all there. But it's one of those that uh, is just a massive, um, massive, uh, it's like the head of the family. And he's influenced so many people's lives. Uh, so I tried to learn that from him. Um, but the biggest impact, of course, was my brother. So he's he's two years younger than me, but his mentality is of a, of, of a child, but, you know, doesn't even know what the value of money is. Uh, so he's a full grown adult, uh, strong as an ox. Uh, and the only the only way I can compare him is if you've seen a film called Rain Man with Tom Cruise and uh, uh, Hoffman that's my brother he's got phenomenal memory he's got phenomenal strength but he's got the understanding and common sense of a of a child give him a 50 quid note and a 5 pound note you will know the difference but but luckily, with some help, we managed to get somebody to help him coach independent skills. Um, but uh, yeah, so he's uh, quite a handful. And of course, my mother is aging, so I have to virtually be the father, the brother, best friend. So yeah, Com like I said, complicated. So when you say you're busy, yeah, you bet your ass I am. But, but I still find time to help people and people you know, for those that appreciate it don't get me wrong through this year it's highlighted a lot of things one of them is I've seen the very best of family and friends through the stuff period but I also seen the very worst of friends and especially family members um, and the way that they behaved and the way they act and the way they expect things so um, my circle of friends are very very small and tight and compact so and the reason for that is um, is trust that's one of those and uh, over the years, you learn that I'm more than happy to prepare, give a chance to anybody, but once someone don't appreciate it or expect it, that's the biggest thing, expect it, then I'm sorry, but I don't have time. Not anymore. Anyway. But, yeah. So the wiring, yeah, let's go through there, the side. So when was the last time you've done a build? Because you seem to have a very capable system. X99 workstation and I, I know that board very well with the uh, behemoth for CPU so I would assume you do a lot of either CAD design, rendering of sorts just certainly that's not my I wouldn't say the choice of a gaming CPU but if you want multitasking then you've got best of both worlds I assume
like I said, I'm not rushing this, so for people that are watching the stream expect the PC to be built, done, dusted super fast, but no, that's not my style. Like I said, I'll take this apart at least two or three times. Because when I build something for somebody, I like to be thorough, test everything out. So if anything does go wrong, I know exactly how to put it right. Unfortunately, a lot of people that build systems, they build them cheap, give them that, but when things go wrong, they're nowhere to be seen. Uh. All right, so you built a system last week, a Ryzen system. What uh, what processor? Is it a thread ripper by any chance? <laughs> funny angle but I wanted just to see how much clearance we've got between the RAM and the radiator and the fans so if I was to put a thicker radiator than the one I selected uh, yeah you're gonna block completely but hey ho no I understand so we can actually fit this radiator like this set as you can see I've got a tiny tiny gap so I've got to move this about halfway so it gives me enough space to put a fan at the back and give me enough leeway so I can put a fitting. Now this fitting here, you can see that, see that. So I can move. That's why I never tighten everything down solid. I can got some leeway on the top radiator to slide it slightly backwards so it gives me enough room gives me enough room to put me a 90 a 90 mil angled fitting that goes out there and this one is going to be pointing down so that that's, that's the height going to be at. So it's going to be quite tight. So pull that out. I'm going to take the fans away. I'll try and fit it. Well you can see why. Uh, UK goes. I built a system for a friend around their house with less than a day. Probably the worst build I've done can take my time doing it so my question to you if you consider that your worst build why did you do it in the first place because most builds the majority of the time is not the build itself it's the planning of it but like I said each to their own each to their own who am I to criticise? Don't criticise, give an opinion. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. It's up to the people that are listening if they find that the opinion they agree with or not agree. If 
find these days a lot of people get offended very easily. It's alright to be offended. Nothing happens to you. If you need to have a debate. Maybe I, I, I'm, a, I'm not a perfectionist beyond that, but I do like to be thorough. Um, I've had people asking me to come to their houses and don't build, I've done builds of their houses, but it took me about a week, even before, to uh, make sure that everything that I needed, I had in the car, uh, had some spares, um, and read the manuals of the motherboards and everything that the person had. So, when you got there, at least you were prepared, instead of finding yourself that you uh, arrived and you need to have the right bits or anything like that. Okay. Enjoy doing it. Why not? Well, the thing is, is um, when I do builds, or I'm looking for parts, I buy like either buy bone systems or complete systems, strip them. So you get to know a lot of hardware by stripping down. I strip down more PCs than I built. That's for sure. Um, and hence why I managed to get a bit of a, a nice stockpile of uh, GPUs and hard drives and power supplies and all that that allows me to do builds very quickly um, but if you enjoy it, you enjoy it nobody nobody's going to criticize let's have a trial fit let's see well I have enough space Fitting. Let's get a fitting on. It's hard to have any long nails. Got two. dry fit I normally use uh, PETG tape plumber's tape on on the fittings something a lot of people don't use these days this is an old it's an old trick to ensure that even if the seal on your fitting fails your thread is sealed minimizes leaks so that's gonna go like that that's gonna go down I want to see with a fitting. Customer wanted a black and red themed PC as such, which, you know, over a different shade, looks like a different shade. I always get rotary fittings. Oh, that is going to be tight. That is going to be tight. Thank you. 
principle this. I'm not kidding, I don't know if you can yeah, you probably could see this is going to be snug, shall we say. do because we're taking the rubber mountings off it. I just want to find out Thread then. No, it's fine. Do the angle. This work is a lot easier if you didn't have banana hands like I do. Great, well, uh, great for building seats. And I just noticed that I'm going to need washers. Going to need washers for the front. <laughs> Child labour is the answer. Uh, See, so black and red. Yeah, uh, it's a, it's a popular choice. It's, I mean, don't get me wrong; it's been done to death, but it's what the customer wants. So who am I to complain? Um, Myself personally, I, I prefer. I, I like the stealth. I like everything stealth. But like I said, each to their own.
inside, but surely that's enough thread. That should be plenty, so Plenty of this is cursed threaded for whatever reason. But you live and learn, you live and learn. Apologies if I go quiet. That's just the way I am.
thing. So we have to do two of the two of the top. So that is how high well the spacing of the fan allows me to push it right up at the top. That's gonna to allow me to run it there. Now the pump is gonna be mounted on a I don't know if you can see that yeah. The pump is gonna be mounted on this space because the graphics card is gonna come out up to here. So I can't put nothing in the middle, can't put anything under. So the only space I've got is here. And with the fans on. Hmm. Might get a bit tricky. Now, if you'll understand why, I'm not gonna put the other fans on. Topic, but did you like cushion floor? <laughs> the floor is actually um, matting, uh, puzzle matting. So the choice was either to get because under it I got chip wood, um, I was either get vinyl, carpet, which I wouldn't advise if you're doing PCs. Or I took the cheap op option, so I managed to get a bulk order off eBay of these exercise mats matting that you do for kids, so you can get different coloured. Um, so I got the whole floor, which is six meters by five and a half meters, for under I think it was like sixty quid, and you just puzzle them together. Da -da 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 -da. So it's one of those that one it cushions so it has a bit of a cushion but also if it gets damaged i can just whip it out and replace it i got loads spare they're not glued on um but it's as simple as that it's an easy way um like i said i've done this conversion as such um on the cheap so i had to come up with a solution and this was the solution the problem that uh, arise when I had all this done it was a massive echo hence why I had to put some uh, foam panelling in either side of the room so hopefully the sound um, does it look more comfortable in a shed? yeah <laughs> um, a lot more comfortable and I've got air conditioning unit as well uh, which is great when you're working in overclocking PCs because you can just put the air conditioning unit blowing into the PC and helps the overclocks uh, but on the summer in here it was boiling uh, so I had to get a standalone air conditioning unit um, which is plugged straight through so it's venting hot air straight out of the house uh, but yeah um, my boy chose the colour because I was going for black 
you know, black flooring. And he said, that's boring. Um, so he said, what colour do you want? And I said, well, blue is my favourite colour. All right, okay. So blue he was. So that's why the uh, the foam panels were orange because it would go with the the logo of the channel. That's the only reason. Nothing vain about it. But thanks for asking. I think the foam panels for the sound dampening uh, actually costed more than the actual floor. But, you know. My son is correct, well done. Um, uh, if you're selling one of the road arms, well, I'm actually uh, looking for more. Because <laughs> I wanted to use. Um, I've got a second mic that I want to set up, which is another road mic with a uh, with a mixer, and so I've got so I've got this one over here, and I've got another one over there for the second mic, which I haven't had time to set up. But uh, yeah, look on eBay. I'm not kidding you. Um, I paid forty pounds. I'm a greedy bastard. Oh, thanks. <laughs> now, I always, always on a lookout. I I buy a lot of stuff because I look and monitor about 250 auctions a day. So I'm always, I've got a list of things that I'm looking for. And it may take me a day, a week. Um, so it's not looking at that. Um, but I always find what I need. Country, but most of the stuff I actually buy is locally. I'd be surprised the amount of stuff that I buy locally in Croon, Nantwich, Winsford and the surrounding area. As long as you're prepared to go and pick it up, people will knock off a bit of the price. But So anyway. That is what we're looking at. We're going to put the graphics card in just to show. I just got one more fan to put in. But I'm only putting these temporary because they're coming off again. So I'm not. So, uh, <laughs> I know you're joking. Um, what mic you. Um, you got or you planning to get or to USB. That's the same with it that I got. The one that I'm using and have been using, but uh, I think it's there somewhere. Uh, NT1A was the other one I'm going to be using. Um, that's going to go through. Um, and uh, a multi mix, which you can see at uh, the bottom shelf. Just have enough time to set it up. I got to admit, Rode as a company make phenomenal, Rode and Shaw uh, make phenomenal microphones. I was, I am on the lookout for a uh, 
lapel, either by a shawl or road. Um, So you've got a Twitch channel, do you stream often? So you're all set up, I went to um, check your page out, you're all, all nicely laid out. Mine's totally out of date for about two years. Um, I've been out of time to, uh, to check it out. So that's how it looks. Fans at the front, at the top. Now, we are gonna just fit card and then uh, you can give me your opinion on what would you do and how would you fit a pump and reservoir on this bad boy. Let's get the two black plates off. You yeah, can see that, yeah. Sorry, sorry for the shaky camera. Sorry for the old focus. And, uh, so I need top. Well, that's the advantage. I still, even though it's a single slotted card, I still need two slots spacing because of the rear bracket. thousand series is two and three quarters size coolers which are absolutely freaking massive This is what does agree.
so you can see. Oh, okay. Alright, uh, for streaming. Need to take my time off my ex long term girlfriend. Damn. Okay. So I assume we just broke up. So apologies. Sorry. Wow, you're going for the full setup. I do I back 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 in the day I used to use a car radiator for liquid cooling. See if it could work. I still have one. In the shed. Yeah. Cheap way. Tanner. Aluminum radiator. Get some. Uh, <laughs> you'll be surprised. Now it's so easy. You just you get everything. It's so easy. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> they don't use the fan from the car. <laughs> I, I, I used uh, like larger fans. Um, I tend to use, like, I, got, I do have external radiators uh, by Phobia, uh, which is. Um, three 360s all in one and I use four fans uh, I tend to use phobia fans and 700 rpm slim on a massive radiator four of these and it's spot on I can imagine, but back then noise didn't matter. Well, matter was get cooler, cooling done. But yeah, you're going way back. Yeah, but that's the thing, mate. It's you know, it's nice to to one meet and talk to somebody um, in regards to not just the modern stuff, but the old ways of doing it. Uh, but yeah. I, I will stream tomorrow, and I will bring it up so you can actually see that I'm not bullshitting. I'll bring in my car. I've got a car radiator um, up, and I still have the. I use Samsung um, a silicon hose uh, to re as reducers to make the connection. But I'll bring it up, and I'll bring the other radiators if you're about. But there you go. So basically, as you can see, there's the dilemma. You can physically see if I pull it back. Because the cars are so long, you can't really put what, what do you call it, a, a ordinary uh, reservoir pump combo, you know, something like. So what I would ordinarily do in a full tower case, you would put something like this, you know, pump combo, um, done and dusted. Um, I've built one myself that doesn't normally go together. Or you would go for a smaller option, which would be a dinky little pump reservoir. Um, but again, that's last resort. Um, so the idea was to use this. I think I might have an issue with it. So I might have to go to the drawing board on a pump. And I've got a feeling
that. This even have a fill port. Can you see that? That's how close of a margin. Okay, so the bracket is going to be up there. So it's going to be a, a very, very, very tight fit. And I can move this top so the fill hole, because um, the inlet, the inlet and outlets at the bottom, I'll be facing that way. That's fine, I can live with that. Um, it's just the return, because firstly it's going to go pump. reservoir pump outlet into CPU, CPU up 240, 240 down to GPU, GPU goes under and it's going to go through there, it's going to be a 90, 90 degree f uh, rotary fitting, so we're going to point out, it's going to come up and it's going to go through here into 360 inlet and come back down so I could there you go so that's why I've got two brackets one which is flat which I can see that could cause an issue with the routing down, or I've got a slightly raised, so it gives me a bit of a uh, bit of leeway. But that is super tight. So to filling this up is going to be <laughs> interesting, but I don't like a challenge. So that's the reason. So what's your thoughts? Yeah, possibly. To the grill at the back. Yeah. But then again, it's mostly facing the same uh, scenario. I think because of the spacing it just might might do it um, I'm picking up the brackets tomorrow morning from the uh, post office um, I can reroute these so at least one I can either link with the fill port at the top if uh, I need it um, if not I've got uh, I'm not worried about filling up the system that's not a problem at all because I've got a Got a um, a bottle. I don't know if you can see on the, on the far end. Which a bendable nose, so that, that that that's fine. It's just the return. The return flow from the 360. So if I get another, it's going to go down. If I put another 90 across. at a slight angle I'll try to get it clean but at least there is a gap so as much as I would like to put a uh, 90 degree fitting on the top which I could possibly push and lead up to, to do that so at least have some access but that is the gist of it it is a big card I've got to admit but my next PC I'm going to build in overclockers so I can just get stuff that I need while building in the back office alright okay 
you must know a few people that will be able to allow to do that. But like I said, you know people, you're a moderator on their forums, I'm sure you'll be able to do that. At least you won't, uh, if you get the wrong part, you want the right players to get a change over. Uh, cool. So what sort of system are you planning in building then? It just seems like you've got a decent workstation, you've got your streaming server. So what are you going for then? I'm intrigued. Suit up and game, how are you? Wow, I remember you. I helped you out during your stream to build a PC. I'm not seeing you stream a lot, but I, I am present in your, um, I am present on your streams. You built one hell of a PC. Took a while to get there, I remember. And I actually recorded your stream while I was helping you out but uh, yeah thanks for showing up that's very kind of you uh, very annoyed with Malda uh, uh, suit up and game um, I was using OBS uh, to do something else and um, your, when I went into Twitch it was still recording my screen. Uh, I wasn't aware of it until I noticed that I had about four hours footage. Um, but uh, yeah, you guys were brilliant that night. Your, your, your friends got a great sense of humour and uh, it did really well and you got a open room working. It took about three, four hours. Uh, Steli, um, are you into network stuff as well? Um, that's a bit um, in regards to networks within the home, or you mean uh, on the, on a business environment? Uh, if it's business, no, it's not my not my forte as much. I'm more of a hardware person, um, but uh, home network, uh, simple, nothing, nothing like you do, because you deal with that on a day in day out basis as a job uh, but yeah uh, I don't have much of a network uh, uh, well thanks very much um, I hope that <laughs> uh, that your PC worked out fine you seem to be because I did see a couple of your streams. Um, but yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, in regards to network, um, no, I've got nothing massive. I simply routed a cable from downstairs direct from my router straight up here because I don't use Wi Fi uh, when I uh, use any of the devices here into a uh, switch. And that's delivering. Uh, I think it's four connections altogether, so I can get up to like four PCs up here. And a shed, I've got again cable routed through the house, through the garden, uh, straight through to the shed, and that's into an eight switch uh, because I did folding at home, so I had multiple PCs that needed constant stable connection uh, to the folding at home um, servers at 24 7 for three, four months at a time. So Wi-Fi kept dropping out, even with an extender and a repeater. So that's why I did a wired straight through. Uh, but the area that I have, the internet, I mean, it's not the best, but it's not the worst. Um, 
comparison to up north or down the main cities so it was like 40 down and six up or something like that but it's cheap um, nothing nothing like uh, business business internet and networks um, <laughs> in regards to network uh, work damn we virtually Wi-Fi everything uh, we've got uh, titanium uh, Wi-Fi tooling uh, all sorts so the network uh, um, six up yeah at peak so firstly it's five 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 so I'm using OBS and I brought it down at uh, 3.5 um, but at it's the first time I've used Studio, so they've done something because, like I said, it's not taking a big, massive hit. It's streaming up at 3.6. Um, CPU usage is not even like 15%, and it's solid, not, you know, no drop frames. So, um, so hopefully the quality is good. It's a 1080p. Um, I know, like Twitch, if you're gaming, you, that's a different story um, but if you're doing this 30 FPS is fine for gaming 60 plus yeah you need a setup like yourself when you using NDI or separate secondary PC uh, for gaming and one for streaming so but for a free piece of software it's all right a lot of people use capture cards and all sorts um, if you, I've tried uh, I think it's HD 60 um, Elgato um, it's good for recording stuff that's not PC related like console into a PC that sort of thing but it doesn't do a lot much more than OBS does uh, and they are pricey to be fair so I tried it for about a week or two and I just returned it um, when I found out that uh, Studio has a bit of an update and a bit of a a re remix of things, but but bloody hell, suit up in game, <laughs> small world, amazing when you start streaming and people you meet. But all right, so I might take the graphics card out and mount the CPU water block, and I think uh, that would be it, really. I want to start putting fittings in, but it's only going to come out. Oh yeah, test fit the fittings. But um, if it's like I said, when it comes to streaming, uh, I don't mind doing it. Uh, I'm not. You know, I support other streamers uh, from Australia who they use this as an income line. I don't. You know, YouTube, I don't monetize any of the videos. Uh, for streaming, <laughs> Twitch, no offense, uh, it used to be a decent platform. I've looked at it now and I've looked at some of the content and it's, uh, well, body painting became very popular, that's all I can say. But yeah, uh, if I have more bills, yeah, once I've got the setup right, I will continue to, to stream. Um, but uh, it's one of those, uh, don't feel that I have to. Um, it's not like my life depends on it. I just like sharing information, talking with people of common interests, but that's what it is. But if you, yeah, it'd be great to have you as a regular. You can always tell me if I'm uh, doing anything that I should do, not do, advice, because I don't know everything. Okay. Right. Um, let's try and look at the fittings. fittings, fittings, fittings.
splitter if needed to be, but I don't think we're going to need it. Here's the funny thing. Overclockers are selling these as their own. If you look on the website right now, and they also do the uh, 45 and the 90, but they actually barrow fittings, but they don't list it as barrow, which is quite interesting. And they don't normally. Um, uh, integrity, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I I, I support the Twitch uh, members who rely on viewership and donations and. Um, because they the game properly they, they they're actually very good um, but uh, yeah I use it as a as just a platform um, IRL is a cesspit yeah some of it some of it is actually really good I found a great guy in the United States and I've, I've actually um, told you the name of the channel and he uh, does his channel name is I'll link it up Rumors TV it's a business been established for a while and he does full PC builds and I only found him was through IRL um, and I've some of the stuff that he's been doing like does the lidding of CPUs um, and I think uh, does low medium high-end pcs ship them all over the world bear with me i'll find it. oh look at and he's yeah five days ago he's done a 9700k build so i'll post that to you boom there you go Hopefully you got that. <coughs> Bloody advert just came up. Still sh do shift work. Um, that depends what you mean by shift work. So I get up at 5 a.m. every, pretty much every day. Not because I have to, because I want to. Because you know I don't sleep too much. Um, so yeah, seven to half three. That's going to change in January. Um, It's 1 a.m. already. Yeah, I'm an insomniac. So, uh, why are you working? Are you working tomorrow, Stelly? Because I'm not. That's why I'm doing the stream. Uh, I work Monday to Thursday. So, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I'm off. Um, so firstly I my work schedule is uh, like seven half three uh, Monday to Thursday straight um, 
I get up at 5 a.m. because I've done all the stuff beforehand. Um, but yeah, uh, January that's going to change. Still seven start, but three, I think it's three o'clock finish. Um, but yeah, so that's the reason. The weekends are the moment I spend a lot of time with the family. So um, finishing on a Thursday, half three, and then that's my weekend started. So um, that's one of the reasons the work that, that I've been doing there suits the situation that currently I am at. So in comparison to when I used to work in hotels, it was mental. You used to do 16, 18 hour days, six days, sometimes seven days a week. Yeah. But man, I didn't realise you were working, man. You didn't don't feel you had to stay on the stream. But uh um yeah. Shoot to been game. Oof. <laughs> yeah. But I used to do night security, so my sleeping pattern as such is uh, non existent. So I go to bed as long as I've got four and a half hours I'm ready to go. Um but that's how it's been for years. Hence why aged a lot very quickly but uh oh come on you didn't tell me you were your own boss so there you go you got best of both worlds so you work from home whenever i want <laughs> god you keep this up you're gonna be an asomiac as well but uh anyway but yeah, so yeah, uh, apologies, apologies, I kept rambling on, but it's been really nice speaking with you. Right, so let's have a look at some fittings. Lots of fittings. I really feel like I need a monitor here so I don't have to keep turning. Or maybe record so I'm facing that side there. Which I can do because I've got a stool. <sighs> you report to the CEO and he doesn't care as long as I do my job. Well, yeah. CEOs. As long as it doesn't affect their bonuses, you'll be all right. Smartphone, you can launch Twitch app and have uh, chat open. Uh, yeah, could do. Like I said, I've not done a stream in two years, so I'm playing catch up. A lot of things has changed, or I wasn't aware of, but thanks for the heads up, suit up and game. Been trying to find someone to help for the last year. 150 people. But what role are you trying to fill? 150 people you've interviewed. Jesus Christ. Okay, suit. I will do. 
What is the role? Or are you just being very picky? Because that seems a lot of interviews. Jesus Christ. Seems a lot. Freaking copper, nickel. How much of a riser would I need? I would need a male to female riser. Yep. How much are we looking at? I'm gonna have to pop in to overclockers tomorrow and get some risers because I need a black one, one of these. Because that will give me the leeway that I need from the back because that's gonna come out into there. I don't have the riser. You can see that there's the hole. That's if you can see that. Drop it down. So the reason I'm gonna need a riser is to just give it a little bit of a gap because from the back where the hole is, it's gonna interfere. So I have to just start an example. I get one of these. Will give me the space that I need, so it's going to be from the back. So when the outlet goes into the inlet of the 240, it'll be on the right angle, the right spacing, and it doesn't interfere with the fan. So, yeah. Oh, AW Cloud Engineer. I got 50k. And they don't use Linux, <laughs> okay, but they still want 50k. Yeah. So, you know, Steli, that's one of those things. I guarantee if you look within your business uh, and the area that you work, you probably have somebody who will probably have a foundation understanding but on your eyes not good enough you say I haven't got time to train people I spent most of my life training people because I spent and wasted a long time looking for the right person looking for somebody that was ready to just slot in and go and even though that I found some people short term brilliant long term that was a bad decision from my side so the people who gave me long-term gains and success was the people that was within the business who I saw potential who I dedicated a lot of time mentoring and training to get them to the level that I expected somebody to be but at least they didn't bring with them bad habits because I provided the foundation so as much 
as you might hate what I'm going to say, um, it'll be probably a lot easier and cheaper um, to train somebody within the business. But that's just my opinion. I don't know your environment totally. I'm just talking from my experience because I wasted a lot of time in interviews and people let me down. Some people uh, acted as they say that they knew what they were doing and let me down. And that's why I found it really hard to uh, um, really, how do I say, really hard to trust people. Uh, over the years you develop uh, very quickly uh, when you speak with somebody uh, within a minute or so um, if that person is either genuine are they just putting an act uh, are they have the self-interest or your interest at heart uh, when they're trying to help you uh, and vice versa or they're just looking for a job to pay the bills which most of them are so uh, Yeah, good point, suit. But then again, I don't know your busy schedule, uh, Steli. So, but like I said, if you, you know, you work from home and your own boss. But, but it depends on your expectations as well. Of is your expectations realistic? I know that you want somebody with some sort of foundation experience on Linux and understanding yeah, the uh, the systems um, that you use within your environment. But again, if you interview the 150 people, which I think is insane, um, but uh, that you know, like I said, my majority of my experience has been management in hotel and hospitality uh, managing excess of 900 people but below you know 27 managers 20 30 managers so it's not like a big scale but you have a high turnover of team from every level from um, floor level supervisory managers uh, general managers um, and when you were looking to get a replacement, nine out of 10, you would look within the business, uh, either the office that you were at, and I was part of a chain. <coughs> so you would look on the other areas uh, of similar uh, setup as you. And most of the time was internal recruitment that long-term paid off for me. Um, Looking good. I'm gonna leave the fitting for tomorrow. I'm gonna to have a because if I start doing the fitting, I want to start doing the tubing. So I might as well get the water block, install the water block, and then I think I'm going to tonight from streaming anyway. But Still continue doing all the bits. Oh, excuse me. I could use another coffee. I should have a coffee machine up here or something. That'll be nice. So I've been spending most of the stream speaking with Steli UK. There's a few people watching the stream. Who else is here apart from Steli and Suit? <sighs> right, I suppose what annoys me is that I don't mind training people as long as they also help themselves. Very true. I would give them some like stuff to read to help for the next week and so they just wouldn't bother. Right, okay. So if, if I'm using my time to train someone, I just special dedication. Um, <laughs> life chat, <laughs> life. 
Oh, you don't want to step from that. Um, yeah, he missed uh, quite a fair bit of suit, but uh, uh, yeah, good point. Uh, in regards to finding someone the, who wants to learn, that's the one of the biggest uh, barriers. And if you're providing the help and the material that's going to make their job easier, and if they can't be bothered, then they're not the right person. <laughs> Yeah, so but you got a valid point there. Um, dedication, a lot of. Oh, well, I'll touch on that. I'll touch on that because I've dealt with multiple age groups, and anybody born before 1985, and then you look at 10 years after that, and after that, and after that is the younger generation. I want to say young, say 18 to 25 um, here within the UK I don't know about the United States um, they're short term they want to make an impact short term uh, they want to feel that they they they're making a difference they don't want to put in the time and the grind uh, so yeah but surely you would have somebody with dedication that's been there for a while working with the business that's prepared to put in the time I mean 50k is nothing to shy about yeah go after where you got yourself oh <laughs> silver platter mm. well unfortunately the I don't want to come across arrogant because I'm not an arrogant person but it's what I've observed especially where I work as an example uh, we've got 4,000 people working in that environment um, and you have multiple age groups from 18 to 65 near ret retirement and um, what I notice is that the younger generation is they feel entitled because they turn up they feel they, they they deserve something and it's not their fault it's mainly the way the the parenting's been done on that generation compared to the previous generation because they're told they're special they're told you know you get a medal for participating on stuff you know but when it comes to the real world they're not equipped so yeah that's why you were uh, <laughs> born in 1985 there you go um, but it's they they're not equipped the, to deal with real life as such compared to the previous two generations um, in regards to like moving forward they, it, it's got to be super fast because this dying age everything is super fast you know everything is super quick you know you talked about Amazon yeah you want something order on Amazon next day boom it's here um, and it's like that on everything if you look you want a film boom Netflix there right so when you want a job and you want to progress you don't want to get the big job you want it super quick but you don't want to put in the time unfortunately that's the generation where we're at and I'm sorry to say when we retire they're the people they're going to be running the country but there you go so suit there we are that's my perception of life at the moment hey ho I never thought I was turning PC into a life, not life advice, but perception. you have uh, 
new motherboard on the X99. Specific inlet and outlet because of the fins inside. Um, so the nearer is the outlet port. Oh, that's a bit of a bugger. If I want to mount it, that's going to be inlet and outlet. If I mount it the way that most people mount it. Uh, out. Turn it. Then you go inlet to the top with the outlet to the bottom. So until I get the pump mounted, the pump is going to go across. So I don't want to go across over the outlet. So then I'll need to use a, a riser, which is not necessary. Well, it comes with the back plate. These were on sale at Overclockers. And that was just, I think, under 35, 34.99. Which for a block, it's actually decent. Right, it's like we took stuff, get things working so it's easy these days. My computer is always working. We grew up with the 3.0! 3.1 and 98. Oh god, blimey. NT. Lovely. Um, wish you had to understand how he worked. All the hardware would be fussy. No shit. Yeah. Kids these days don't work how tech works. Just expect it to work or throw it and get a new one. Yeah, well, unfortunately that's the culture that we're currently on. Um, it's one of those that um, Yeah, it's it's the generation that we're on, so you know, everything doesn't last as long like technology because it's cheaper to replace it with a new one than to send it off to get a fix you know suit you live in the states you know with apple as an example you got an apple mac something gets broken on it you go to the apple store and they say yeah we can fix it. it's going to get s amount for the parts and the labor is going to be like five six hundred dollars and they always recommend was actually you know It'd probably be cheaper for you to just get a brand new one instead of fixing it. That's you know that's the that's the current society that we live in. You know people don't you know then you look at uh, uh, throw anyway, one for you suit. I uh, let me see if I can find it. If I can find it, I'll send you the link because I I think he's um, he's a great guy, um, American guy, who um, who really really hates Apple with a vengeance, and he's got a business that he repairs phones. Uh, let's see if I can find him. I followed way way too many people. Yeah, Lewis Rossman. Well, that's the name of the guy. 
great uh, if again if you like tech stuff because he gets into the, the nitty gritty um, of Apple products under a microscope so check him out because I've learned a lot from this guy uh, fixing Apple products without going to an Apple store as such um, Three eight six of Pedro was Jesus. You hoard everything. I thought I was a hoarder when it comes to tech. You saw the stuff I got on my shed. You know, I thought you know, ancient stuff. But I still have my original first gaming motherboard with a Athlon FX sixty two dual core two point eight. I think it was gigahertz. Uh, on an Aces motherboard and I d it was my first one and it still works um, but you know I have to run it on Windows well not Windows yeah it supported about 4 gigs of RAM so anything more than XP that's pretty screwed so we got copper the only thing with mixing metals is because the water block on the GPU is nickel. The radiators are lining with copper, but it's mixed metals. So if you're using distilled water, the bias side is fine. As long as you don't make sure you don't have any leaks, you'll be fine. When you start introducing. Um, uh, specifically made chemicals that could react so it should be interesting to see how the UV red by Mayhem's um, react to different metals but that's why we adding a, uh, a drain valve so if it does change color we can simply run them out interesting key why would I give you that? With this? Because no. Okay, what's that? Yep. Yeah. That's actually a good idea, getting a, a motherboard and frame it. I know people have done a wall, all motherboards. Um, work of art? Well, depends. <laughs> depends on the brand. I come across some proper pigs of motherboards that shouldn't even be allowed to be produced but that was a different uh, era right. some room. so in your PC building what's the sort of thermal paste have you used on a pass You hate green PCBs? Well, you're screwed for servers then, aren't you? <laughs> uh, black or dark blue? Yeah. Grizzly. Which one? Well, if you're using water cooling, there's only main one. Well. I don't know. Try not. I'll try to find <sighs> tell you what's the favourite that I've used in years. So underrated. It was phenomenal. Attic Silver 5. We also have used PK. 
Oh, bring one. Well, The water block with a motherboard out of the PC case. Which most likely is. But if your case got a cutout, check. interesting very much alike then Arctic Silver MX4 yeah yeah very good I mean the difference between having some decent temps you can have the best water block best water cooling kit but if you're using some basic standard thermal paste you know, people don't understand that that is what can that is what's conducting the heat from the component you're trying to get rid of the heat from and the equipment you're using to dissipate the heat that's the layer that's the important bit so spend decent money and uh, grizzly can't fault it I've tested it can't fault it um, liquid metal Macal um, Cal Labs again what we all right, I think I'm gonna stop the stream uh, yes. the next few minutes because one, I'm hungry, thirsty, so a few lessons learned for tomorrow, and I need to take bits out so then tomorrow I can mount the pump, the water block. get the connections that I need the bracket hopefully would fit perfectly and start tubing and then get some of the wiring so the PSU to get in there and hopefully be at the point where I can fill with the still water first and eventually prime the system and then uh, yeah there comes the fun bit yeah up time yeah so it's not been it's been interesting it's been uh, not, I feel rusty I got to admit but it's been nice been constantly talking uh, <laughs> no night pot uh, no, I'm not kidding you I've not set anything up not setting up at all I haven't virtually two years ago I tested the sound in the video on Tuesday and then had to get around um, understanding OBS studio and then the wonderful delight the options within uh, twitch TV which especially now you can do so much 
so there you go but yeah tomorrow night probably start a little bit earlier about half eight something like that uh, half eight nine o'clock and then if I Saturday possibly as well like I said I've got no fixed schedule this is off the cuff but thank you very much for uh, your company gentlemen and can't so I'm picking somebody up I'll have to mess with them later but it's been uh, been interesting and hopefully it's been interesting for you um, but if you have any questions or anything like that feel free to to bombard me with it as long as I've got the time I'll help all right so until tomorrow night 8 39 p.m. if you're about great if you're not I'm sure we'll see you at some point all right take care everybody good night